Did you know that the health of our waters, from our creeks and rivers to the bay and oceans, doesn't just depend on what's coming out of sewer and factory discharge pipes? Much of it depends on what's covering the land that slopes downhill to the water. Whether it's shopping centers or neighborhoods, farms or forests, or wetlands. This land can be located hundreds of miles away from the water, anywhere in the watershed. If the type of land cover makes it easy for rainwater to run quickly off the land into the nearest creek or storm drain, that makes for polluted waters. We call this runoff. When water moves quickly across the surface of the land, it picks up many more pollutants, including plain old soil. When water instead has a chance to move more slowly by first filtering through the tree canopy and forest floor, it has a much better chance of permeating or percolating into the soil and carries far fewer pollutants. That's why we care about the permeability of every square foot of land cover around us. Today, we're going to see how permeable the land cover right around us, on our school grounds or around our home, is. To do this, we're going to sample the permeability of a few three inch circles of land cover, about seven square inches per sample. We won't directly test the permeability of our roof, but can you guess how much rainfall would permeate into the soil directly under our roofs? Yes, that answer would be zero. All of the rain that falls on our roofs becomes runoff, not good. For our work, we'll need these tools. A string backpack or bag to carry our other tools. A ruler with centimeters. A six inch tall by three inch diameter cylinder, either a PVC pipe or a can with both ends removed, with a line drawn around the circumference at one quarter inch from the bottom. A clipboard. A lab sheet, either printed or on your iPad a map of the test area, or a drawing sur surface to sketch one, either paper or on your iPad, a pencil, a timer or cell phone set to three minutes, a two liter bottle of water, and a 1000 milliliter measuring cup. Next we'll assign roles. We need a reader, recorder, cylinder holder, timer, pourer, and measurer. For consistent results, each team member will repeat the same assigned task for all test sites. Depending on the number of people on your team, some may need to perform more than one role. If you're doing this at home, it's extremely helpful to have at least one other person or talented pet available to hold the cylinder firmly to the ground so that water doesn't escape from the bottom. We're going to look for areas that we predict have different degrees of permeability. One that is permeable, one that is semi-permeable, and one that is impervious. For our purposes, we're going to use the terms pervious and permeable interchangeably. When scientists talk about surfaces that are not permeable that cause runoff, they usually use the term impervious. When you select your first test site, mark its location on your map. Record a description of your test site and your hypothesis on your lab sheet. Twist the cylinder into the ground up to the black line marked on the outside. Apply constant pressure to the top of the cylinder to prevent water from leaking out from the bottom. If your cylinder cannot be pushed into the ground, pour a small amount of water on the ground surface instead, observe where it flows, and then draw an arrow on your map that shows the direction that the water flows. Place an X on your lab sheet under infiltration time and water level remaining. If you can get your cylinder pushed into the ground, measure 650 milliliters of water. While the cylinder holder holds the cylinder, 
the timer and pourer begin timing and pouring at the same exact time. If all of the water infiltrates into the ground before three minutes is up, stop the timer and record the amount of time it took to infiltrate in seconds under infiltration time on your lab sheet. If the timer reaches three minutes and water still remains in the cylinder, the measurer will measure from the top rim of the cylinder to the top of the remaining water level in centimeters and the recorder will record this measurement on your lab sheet under water level remaining. If the water didn't infiltrate at all, place an X on your lab sheet under infiltration time and water level remaining and draw an arrow on your map that shows the direction that the water flows when you remove the cylinder. On your map, label the site with a P for permeable if more than 14 centimeters of water infiltrated into the ground within three minutes. Label it S for semi-permeable if between two and 14 centimeters infiltrated into the ground, or label it I for impervious if less than two centimeters infiltrated into the ground. In the margins of your map, make a key showing P equals permeable S equals semi-permeable, and I equals impervious. Repeat this test for one or two more sites as time allows. Students from other classes will conduct tests on other areas of your school site. When you combine your data, see what conclusions you can make about your school grounds. If you worked with the watershed model prior to completing these tests, Use what you learned to propose ways to reduce the runoff originating on your school grounds or home site. To see the downhill path the runoff from your school grounds or home takes, check out this website. Remember, every square foot of land cover in our watershed has an impact on the health and quality of our waters. Who doesn't want clean fishing and crabbing boating and swimming, and drinking water.